necessary requirement then very important settlement of exports once export is made import is made what is the when so i have not made any advance payment now next case you see the about advance payment if i made now i am not making any advance payment i imported goods they have given me uh, they have supplied me goods basing on my goodwill when i have to settle my imports the time permitted is only 6 months from the date of shipment very very important if advance payment is made i have to get all these things if advance payment is not pay made i got imports without making any payment i secured the goods now when i have to settle the transaction or be it it is stipulated that within 6 months of the date of shipment not receipt of cargo here from the date of abroad shipment we have to ensure settlement of the import transaction very very important then next one more thing always exports are valued at fob value only what is fob value i told you it is pre on board exports for incentive purpose all these purposes custom duty purposes you can value only at fob that means pre on board we should not consider any other charges insurance uh, this carry because that well the pre on board only the value india is receiving when i am exporting something from india what is the value india is getting uh, pre on board is the only value up to that only india is getting money beyond that uh, it may or so if exports are always valued at which value fob value only imports uh, what is the value imports are always valued at uh, caf value only i told you see because i take the landing cost exports uh, loading cost i to i will take at the loading ship is loaded what is the cost i will consider imports uh, for the levying tariff duty everything uh, i will consider the value of cif that is carry insurance right i told you last week that uh, cif only we have to consider all imported like import licenses are given on cif value only export license are given fob value only so because party should not uh, misuse it party has because you see, suppose 1 lakh uh, import license is there uh, it must buy only goods for 80000 rupees excluding uh, insurance and freight charges it should not buy full amount very important uh, import license includes caf uh, not fob value is there suppose uh, there 1 lakh is the machinery cost uh, transport and freight costing 20 lakhs so 20000 rupees uh, total is 1.2 lakh usd party is having only license for 1 lakh you should not permit if because party has to obtain import license for entire caf value not fob value there only exports fob imports caf okay this is very important from exam point of view one common question will come okay in all levels then now very important for normally parties have to settle the transaction within 6 months from the date of uh, overseas this one shipment abroad date of shipment now the party don't want to pay whether why 6 months also over shipment do the goods received bill of entry everything is there but outward remittance it is not sending whether bank can sit mum who has to because i told you india is a very fair country we don't permit such things because you have to settle only even though you have got merchandise you can't pay foul so you have to settle the transaction within 6 months now party is not remitting within 6 months what to be done who is having power for that that means even then also we are having power ad banks other now you see this power also given to banks only very important early rbi to repair now this also we have power we can consider extension up to 6 months at a time 6 months he has not paid one more 6 months one more 6 months one more 6 months up to 3 years you can permit extension very important question imports uh, up to 3 years you can permit extension without any reference because uh, who can permit uh, authorized dealers in banks can permit you can permit uh, you are given earlier this power is uh, rbi only you now rbi is devolving all powers to the bank itself uh, bank itself so this is very important but one clause is the total outstanding should not exceed 10% import remittances or usd 1 million but that is exceeding he has to pay because i told you na india don't want to carry huge foreign debt this is very important so up to how much time you can extend 6 uh, months 6 months so how many extensions you can give party is having 6 months time 
you can extend only up to three years. That means uh, you can give five extensions, but you can't give uh, three years at single go. First year you can give six months. Second year one more six months. Third year one more like that. Up to three years you can consider extension of import settlement. It should not exceed one million, or it should not exceed a ten percent of import remittances. Next, very important. Suppose uh, import has happened. A party don't know he has no money. He want to avail trade rate. Will you trade rate is there? Trade credit is there are two types: buyer credit or supplier credit. Both are given by foreign bank. I told you. Now, what are the ceilings for it? Up to twenty million automatic. There is no problem. You know, beyond twenty million, you have to go for approval route. Maturity for non-capital because you can't take loan for more than one year. In case of non-capital goods, very important. In case of capital goods, it is more not more. They should not be more than five years. And car should not be LIBOR plus fifty basis points. It is very. It may vary. This week I am. It was told. Before exam, I'll share you exact details. But as of now, it is LIBOR plus fifty points. Okay. So this is about trade credit. Part imports they want to avail foreign credit. They don't have money. They have the revenues now. Lot of banks are extending this credit. Trade credit will be in our buyer credit or supplier credit. I told you it is buyer are giving. It will be given to our buyer. Our supplier is extending. Both are given by overseas bank only, and they need a LOC from Indian bank. So how up to what amount USD twenty million means twenty how much? Two crore ten million means you have to say because. Up to USD two crores into seventy. How much it comes? Nearly seventy eight. You take up to one fifty crores. No need of any approval because the party can the automatic route beyond that only it is approval. So maturity it can't exceed one year because you can't take three years is a trade rate for a buyer trade rate for a small now current account goods. Capital account goods you can't take more than five years. Very important. Trade trade is the maximum ceiling is only five years. Definite question and cost should not exceed a three fifty basis point. LIBOR plus three point should not exceed. This may vary the ceiling. The cost they want government want to revise. We I will let you know exact date. Okay, exact late later date. Okay, then this is about trade trade. Understood? Not only automatic. Then. Whether I can waive bill of entry filing, I told you for all imports they have any remit outward remittance made. Bill of entry is mandatory in IDPMS package. Whatever you have to map, you have to map bill of entry for all outward remittances made. Suppose party has made outward remittance for one million, it is not in a position to submit bill of entry. Import has taken place. Whether I can waive bill of entry submission? Yes, very important. Up to one million. That means up to 10 lakh transactions. Uh, see how much power bank is uh, being given. RBI has given this power also to bank itself. You can waive even submission of bill of entry up to 1 million transaction. Very important. Up to 1 million means 10 lakhs. That means up to 10 lakhs into 70 crore, up to 7 to 8 crore transactions bill of entry filing also. We are waiving basing on what. MDCEO declaration of any listed company or IT certificate. He has submitted either one, either CEO declaration or IT declaration for a listed company with net worth not less than 100 crores. So all listed companies with 100 crores more net worth, basing on CEO's declaration, even though they sent money outside, we can waive submission of bill of entry up to one million. This power also was also given. To banks itself, very important question. You can waive even bill of entry submission also up to what amount? One million. Then one more thing is then high C sales. What is meant by high C sales? Sometimes uh, our buyer may sell goods on high C itself. Then what happens to bill of entry? Then uh, they have to inform high C sales bill of entry is this separate category. That they have to file. Very important. IC sales means uh, even before the receipt of cargo to Indian shores, uh, they might sell the cargo and it may go uh, to some other place. You are selling in IC itself. So what is happening uh, in bill of entry? If it is reaching Indian shore, uh, one aspect will be there. Not reaching Indian shore, the one aspect will be there. In both aspects, such different uh, bill of entry they can file. One more thing is merchant trade transaction. Very important from exam point of view. 
what is meant by because ic sales means there will be change of uh, this importer because you can sell it you can below it can be issued by other name also we are permitting clear now merchant trade transaction what is meant by merchant trade transaction normally because i told you most of the countries don't other countries na suppose uh, the merchant trade is nothing but broker trade normally the trade happens between a buyer and seller now buyer don't know seller seller don't know buyer one broker is there if he is buying from the seller and he is selling to the buyer it is called merchant trade transaction in simple parlance broker trade transaction because what is happening but india is also increasing because we want to become a transshipment hub lot of trade merchant trade is picking up and lot of relaxations were given because it will take a lengthy topic i will cover in next session if possible or somebody else will cover merchant trade transaction means simply a brokering a brokering transaction suppose somebody in china in singapore is selling some spices somebody in germany wants to import it or somebody in china is selling some spices germany wants to import if they are don't trusting chinese people what we can do indian fellow will india he is buying from china and selling to germany but here the beauty is the consignment will never reach india this buying leg is called import leg though it's there having two leg in merchant trade transaction is a very important transaction it is having two legs here the consignment will never reach india import leg means suppose you take a buyer is in bangladesh seller is in bangladesh and buyer is in us or buyer is in israel or some other country they don't want to deal with a small country bangladesh so what is doing in calcutta our fellow is there he is buying goods from bangladesh and selling the same to a fellow in us here from goods will flow directly from the bangladesh seller to us buyer but what they will do the payment will come to us buyer to our our merchant trader we only make the payment so it's a triangle first us pay us buyer will pay the money to us we will book the consignment and then pay them the bangladesh fellow bangladesh fellow directly exports goods to us buyer so this is triangle because this import leg buying from bangladesh it is called import leg selling to us it is called export leg so transaction which comes first money because both legs there are two arms whether we are paying advance payment and he is supplying whether we are getting advance payment and supplying if we are getting because this also lot of liberalization happened lot of earlier is very tight now in both these cases lot of regular relaxations happened even you can finance for this other export import legs also very important so understood na this is merchant trade transaction means a transaction ex foreign exchange transaction is happening it is a trade transaction only but uh, instead of uh, trade is a transaction between direct seller and buyer one more less there broker is called merchant trader what he will do he will issue invoice na because he will import something from bangladesh and he will export something to us here the import only in paper only is importing what he is doing is asking the bangladesh buyer seller to directly send to us buyer so in merchant trade transaction there is no concept of bill of entry or shipping bill only is in nominal and optional transactions uh, merchandise will not flow into india only payment will be happen payment settlement will happen so we, we are also helping because to have we want to get this uh, a lot of opportunities are there because all countries because uh, we don't want to deal with weak countries like uh, this philippines uh, cambodia all these things uh, there is lot of opportunity for merchant trade transactions and that's why we are facilitating it so understood a merchant trade transaction there is no concept of bill of entry or shipping bill it's only a dummy transaction but it will be having import and export leg goods will never flow into india only we are doing brokerage here that's all okay this is about merchant trade transaction then one more question whether import documents have to be received by bank only suppose uh, whether i made advance payment or not uh, or in uh, lc lc means anyhow it comes to bank only in case of non lc suppose i imported something can i remit the goods directly or i have to uh, get the because normally is normal parlance uh, any overseas seller also will send the documents to bank only for payment because nobody will trust other by overseas buyers 
but in case whether the, whether i can receive directly import documents i imported something i didn't make payment i got the doc shipping bill to me directly i got the shipping bill with uh, this uh, bill of entry this uh, bill of entry and uh, bill of lading i received whether uh, in such cases i can remit the question is whether the bank is in order to make payment uh, where import documents are received directly by the importer yes up to 3 lakh dollars up to usd 3 lakhs we can permit it it is a wholly owned subsidy or status holder exporters very very important direct receipt of import bills also permitted not all because everything is permitted but subject to some ceiling up to 3 lakh usd even the normally or export import transactions must be routed to a bank only otherwise dealer only has to route to all the transactions but in some cases if a party is in a party is being trusted by the overseas seller if he is sending the document directly to our party in such cases up to 3 lakhs 3 lakh usd very important exam question you can make payment even though import document received by the party directly if who may in case of wholly subsidies wholly owned subsidy or status holder exporters these two cases you can permit them then very important i told you uh, fob value what is meant by a status holder in exports now coming to exporter na what is meant by a common question very important na there are five stars i told you exports means uh, the procedure i have told you na they have to file ecm shipper has to file they have to submit shipping bill they have to get declaration all these things uh, lot of export formalities are there and i told you nidhiyat bandu india is giving lot of incentives for exporters so this one star two star three star five star four star four five star ratings are if they these are based on very important fob value of exports fob means pre on board i told you exports are always valued in fob value only if the party is exporting up to 3 million for last time clear na he will be given one star rating up to 25 million 25 million na exports only is trading is two star 100 3 star 4 500 4 star 5 star means 2000 because basing on the star rating lot of privileges we are giving you simply remember na first is 3 nearly 8 3 into 8 25 into 4 into 5 into 4 that's all first two you remember very it is very simple 3 and 25 then 25 into 4 100 100 into 5 500 Into four once again, so three up to three million USD, twenty-five million USD, hundred million USD, five hundred and two thousand million USD. You are getting this star status, export house status, nas vasta man star house. Lot of incentives are there, and always the very important. The all incentives are given by the form of duty entitlements or cash. That's why uh, we'll discuss later. Now uh, these are the Now, because basing on the star status, they are laid out. Because five star means uh, they will give an expert priority. They can rate themselves. They can issue a certificate of origin themselves. They can give custom declarations. No bonds required. Lot of privileges were given for these star holders, status holders. We call them status holders. One star status holder, two star status holder, like that. Uh, it is based on the turnover, based on FOB values. Okay. the very important exam point of view uh, trade trade okay ecb up to 10 years were permitting uh, ecb apart from loan there are several types of uh, getting external commercial borrowing for capital very popular exam point of view you know one is fccb second is fceb third is masala bond what are the differences between these three what is meant by fccb normally ecb means loan it can flow it can flow as a loan sometimes uh, what the bond means are issuing they just a deposit what is meant by foreign currency convertible bond foreign currency convertible bond means very important uh, fccb means it is foreign currency convertible bond ecb means external commercial borrowings uh, up to 10 years we are disc- we can avail trade it up to 5 years this is up to 10 years there are lot of modding having term loan you can avail but uh, the popular modes are for fccb fceb and masala bonds from exam point of view fccb means very important 
foreign currency convertible bond what is meant by convertible bond i am issuing bonds just the deposit in a what is meant by convertible bond very important question convertible bond means if the party in a party has a right to convert the investment into equity suppose i have given you loan i am not trusting you suppose you take a case of bb daily or big basket or this one ola all these things some us institution has invested in the form of bonds but if it is in the form of pfccb get the option the us investor the company is doing good suppose you take bb daily you take this growers company is doing good if it is issued if it was issued fccb that bond holder na he has the option to convert it into equity basing on the is because advantage to the investor he is normally giving loan only in the form of bonds such as bonds but if it is in form of fc means uh, if his investment is going on well doing well he can convert the bond into convertible bond into equity that means he is getting a stake in the firm so this is risky for our uh, domestic borrower advantages for the overseas lender so fcc but lot of capital flows are coming in fccb mode uh, we are also encouraging it okay but no problem it becomes fda like that so what is meant by fccb sir it's only a form of ecb but convertible bonds means uh, even though initially party is investing in the form of bonds bonds only they have the option to convert them into equity at their because it is not mandatory if you are not doing well you should not say no it is they are only having the uh, that option only the lender can convert his debt into equity this is the mode this is called foreign currency convertible bond then what is foreign currency exchangeable bond very important this is also a very important advantage advantages to invest overseas invest only what is the difference between convertible bond and exchangeable bond exchangeable exam point of view very important exchangeable bond in convertible bond i will get the shares of only that company exchange sir suppose tata industry is there tata motors on company is there tata tcs is there etc na in case of exchangeable bond i invest in tata motors or tata group but i can use the it is the instead of getting the loan repaid i have the option to exchange this investment into bond this bond to equity of tata comes tcs which is performing well so both are same i can convert the debt into equity at my will i have given some loan if the company is doing well instead of ask the repayment of loan i can convert my loan into equity so that i will get be i will be getting perpetual profits in case of exchangeable bond not only this company i can ask the equity shares of some other sister company also suppose i gave loan to tata industries but i can if i give in the form of fcb i have the right to ask to give instead of repaying the loan some stake in tcs that means it exchangeable bond not only convertible na it is exchangeable also i can exchange it to some other company in the same group which is doing good suppose canada bank is there choice is doing good somebody has given fcb to canada bank some overseas investor if choice is good we can uh, that overseas lender can ask uh, instead of canada bank don't repay the loan uh, you give me choice shares or if canada bank mutual funds is doing good uh, instead of asking canada bank repayment uh, they have the right to exchange canada bank mutual fund uh, you give me some robeco shares like that this is called exchangeable bond foreign currency exchangeable bond and foreign currency convertible bond very important from exam point then what is masala bond this question is coming uh, very frequently in all exams what is meant by masala bond this is also a form of ecb only i am in a, in foreign currency bonds the loan i am raising in is foreign currency only so i have to bear the exchange risk suppose i took a 100 crore loan now the euro exchange rate is good when if you is very falling na i have to pay more because foreign currency risk he is being borne by me only suppose i took 100 us 1 1 lakh usd loan i am getting 70 lakhs now 75 lakhs now if uh, exchange rate has gone up to 85 in the rupee fell when the maturity how much i have to pay i have to pay 85 lakhs because i took 1 lakh 1 lakh i have taken uh, 1 lakh usd 
has C F C C B loan, like bond. Then on the date of maturity, rupee value fell to eighty five instead of seventy five. So how much I have to spend? I have to I have to repay eighty five lakhs instead of seventy five lakhs because India's currency fell down. Same is the case in case of all foreign exchange ECBs, foreign currency bonds, exchangeable bonds. Uh, the currency risk is borne by Indian company. We are losing. In case of masala bond, uh, we are issuing our debt in form of rupees only. I am issuing masala bond in Germany. What I say, I am borrowing hundred crore rupees. So the exchange risk is passed to the overseas investor. So I will pay him only hundred lakhs. Hundred crores, rupees only. He has to take care of the exchange rate fluctuations. In case of maso, always masala bonds are rupee bonds. All these foreign FCCB, FCEB, and masala bond. These three are the popular type of bond ECBs. They're getting a loan from other company abroad locations. Out of these, first two are in foreign currency. Their exchange rate has to be borne by Indian borrower. Because I may gain or lose. In case of masala bond, this is also a type of borrowing from Indian companies. Here the debt is in the Indian rupees only. I will issue hundred crore bonds in Germany. So what is happening at the end of the maturity? I will pay only hundred crores with interest only, coupon only. So there is no risk of exchange fluctuations on my head because I am insulated from exchange risk. This is called masala bond. So these three very important here. Then, in all exams, one common question will be getting the options. What is meant by option? In forex, the options always all levels. We are getting one common question. What is meant by option? What is meant by na? What is meant by option means because I am buying because I want to buy a pen. Now the cost is ten rupees. Now if I am thinking it will increase up to fifteen rupees. So what I am taking? I am buying an option to buy a pen at thirteen rupees. So this is that is called a call option. I want to buy a pen at thirteen rupees. Now it is ten only. I am thinking it may become fifteen rupees. This is called call option because if I want, if I am booking any forward contract to buy, just like a forward contract only. I am booking. So I am just insulating it from the. If I am booking any forward contract for purchasing, it is equal to option. But the beauty of option is. On that day, the pen rate is not thirteen rupees, but twelve rupees only. I thought it will go up to thirteen rupees, but not there. So there is no need of buying from my part in forward contract. I have to definitely buy. The the difference in forward contract and options are forward contracts. You have to bear the loss. Suppose that the present day cost of pen is ten rupees. I am thinking it may go up to fifteen rupees. So I book it thirteen rupees to buy. In case of foreign forward contract, even though next month December thirty first the rate is twelve rupees, I have to buy at thirteen rupees and bear that one rupee loss. In case of option, if the rate is thirteen and above only, I will use that option. If it is not thirteen rupees, I will simply forget it. So I have no risk. So option is we are getting a right to buy, a right to buy or sell, but no obligation. In forward contract, we are having a right to buy or sell with obligation. If the adverse is there, we can't come out. In option, that exit route is there. When forward contract you are booking, you are locked. It may be gainful or it may be harm. You may be losing money or gaining money. But you are locked on forward contract. You have to because you can't simply cancel. You have to bear that loss. When you are booking option, it is somewhat costly, but you are not locked. It is advantageous; you can avail it. If it is not advantageous, you can forget it. So this is the basic difference between forward contract and this one options. So understood. Very important. Forward contract. We are having the right to buy or sell. Forward purchase. We have right to purchase period. Or forward sale. We have right to sell. But at the same time, we have the obligation also. We can't come out. Uh, suppose I told I'll be selling a pen at twenty uh, rupees, but on that day pen selling cost is thirty rupees. Even then I have to sell at twenty rupees only because in forward contract I have the obligation. I have to lose ten rupees. 
option may forward option sale option means put option i can put a say uh, in options uh, buying is called call uh, selling is called put in call uh, if i put a put option for 20 rupees uh, if it is uh, selling is more than 20 also i will not use this option if selling is less than price 20 rupees uh, i can use this put option so the difference between forward and option very very important if you want to repeat once again in forward contract we are having the right to purchase or sell at a determined price agreed price same way we are having obligation also we can't come out of the contract without execution or incurring the loss or proportionate loss or gain here in a option mode we are also having the right to buy or sell without any obligation i can come out without executing the contract if it is not adverse so this is called if i am taking an option for buying it is called call option so i want to buy one dollar i want to buy a dollar at 75 rupees it is called call option so on that day i am 35 on that day if the dollar weight is that 7 30 74 only i will not choose this if it is 76 i will use this option put option i want to sell a dollar at 75 rupees i had booked a contract on that day the dollar value is 774 i will sell it use it if it is 76 i don't use it this is the logic here so this are this is called put and call option put means selling option call is a buying option okay there are two types of common question european option and american option european option means you can use only on due date suppose i am booking on 31st december on contract i can use european option only on due date american options i can use on any date i can be entire december i can use it so the difference because options it is the obligation to buy or sell with a hidden right to buy or sell without obligation but what is meant by european option it might be it can be used only on due date american option it can be used on any date prior because during that period so normally people buy american options only because you can strike you know we can't exactly match the due date okay this is about put and call options definite question will come don't get confused call option means uh, we are a, a buying option put means uh, selling option when you use call option uh, when the market price is when you buy higher than the your strike price the, when strike price is higher than the call price when you use put option uh, when the market when the uh, price is when because less than the because this you have to confuse because i have comp buying option for 75 rupees when i have used it uh, if the market rate is less than 75 i have a sell option for 75 rupees when i will use it uh, if the market rate is uh, less than because i have buying option buying option i can use if the market rate is more than my price selling option put option i will use if the market rate is falling below the book price so this is the logic na this is called difference is called spread call is buying put is selling call i will strike if the rate is above the option price put i will strike if the rate is below the uh, option price this is the logic because we want to make profit that's all european uh, only on due date american any date before that uh, expiry okay then now friends uh, um, we'll discuss about export bills now as i told you export by import bills uh, will be same we'll be having all the set of documents uh, export this one so when export bill is there uh, our customer is exporter so he will be getting lc in his favor we might have, so when you are this when you are handling the export bill uh, you must ensure because already we have given pc to him now that will discuss we you must be careful uh, in ensuring that the bill is in terms of lc because unless it is there any disturbance is there they will not make money so how many types of export bills are there i will discuss now as i told you if the bill there are two types of bills site bill and usance bill site is payable at site usance means payable after some time after as per say as per terms so the bill is under lc 
whether it is side bill or udans bill you call it as n negotiation of bill the always a bank will negotiate the lc bill it might be as n is the common word for negotiation uh, of either side bill or udans bill under lc so n bill means uh, always lc bills then what is meant by purchase bill uh, purchase bill is a non lc bill side bill discount bill means uh, non lc bill uh, udans bill then one more mode is collection bill means there is no lc you are simply sending on collection and uh, for fifth one is very important maturity bill what is m bill this is uh, because there are five types of bills uh, n p d c m n is negotiation of bill negotiation means we are handling bills under lc it might be side or it might be usance p means purchase of bill it is always na it is non lc bill it is side bill d is a discount of bill it is always a non lc bill usance bill c means we are sending bills on collection then m means maturity bill what is maturity bill here this is the maturity bill means This is very common, definite question because lot of ED payment entries are pending in uh, your bank. So what is that? Suppose I received advance payment, then I have to ship. So to close ED payment entry, I have to lodge one bill called maturity bill in the system. That means for all all advance payment received for exports, we have to lodge once uh, I received one lakh advance payment. Later I shipped. so what bill to close edpms entry in system we have to large maturity bill m bill then only we can close the edpms entry so edpms entry is always uh, shipping bills and uh, invoice remittance in ed uh, common question uh, idpms always it will be dealing with uh, bill of entry and or messages edpms uh, always they will be dealing with uh, invoice remittances and uh, shipping bills this is about bills हेलो सर हाँ सर सर एन बिल सर Yes, sir, friends. Uh, as I told you, when uh, ours is an export promotion policy, and when uh, party is having any export order or export LC with him, uh, 
he has the right to avail packing credit from any, any bank. PC means packing credit. He has the right to avail PC from any bank. So uh, that means his right is there for him. And from bank's point of view, I told you, all uh, because we are giving the PC to them, uh, they have to submit bills to us only. When LC is there against the LC, we are giving them credit to PC. So that bill party has to submit to us. So that is called negotiation of bill. And because somebody asked me to repeat that, I'm repeating it, sir. Negotiation of bill means uh, we are handling bills submitted by party against LC given to him. So here, uh, but ensure that uh, the party has made shipment as per the LC terms. Uh, and we can claim reimbursement by the LC opening bank. We'll get it. Uh, if everything is ordered now, because within five days, uh, uh, they are not notified means uh, the bill is in order, they'll be we are getting the money payment. So no problem. So in case of non-LC bills, uh, it is called purchase or discount, P and D. What is meant by purchase bill? Uh, uh, just like import bill, uh, we are also, say, our party also might be sending uh, non-LC bills because our collection is like that. But basing on the party stature, uh, even non-LC bills also sometimes are handling. Because the party wants immediate trade means we can purchase or discount uh, even non-LC bills also. Which bill will purchase? Uh, Non-LC, all site bills, uh, we call them as purchase. That means uh, we purchase that uh, any site bill without LC, it is called purchase bill. What is the discount bill? Uh, Non-LC, Dujan's bill, uh, we call them a discount bill because we'll charge interest also, discount rate. All these business, these, these four bills, uh, proceeds will go to outstanding PC only because nowhere bills proceed, negotiation or purchase or discount. Uh, uh, very important collection bills, uh, maturity bill, no proceeds will be there. Very important uh, from exam point of view. The proceeds are uh, this, all these bills uh, will go to LC only, very PC only, very important. So the uh, will be covered, sir. So when LC uh, all the bills in P and D and C bills, uh, the proceeds uh, when bill is paid, uh, it will come to our nostra account and will convert in Indian rupees. It will go to our outstanding PC accounts only. But what is maturity bill? I told you uh, because uh, all shipping bills are GRs. We need inward remittance. All inward remittances uh, we need GR. In some cases. Overseas importer has sent advance remittance to our party. That means he has made advance payment. So inward remittance message will be there. Our party has made shipment. Bill of entry will be there. This shipping bill will be there. So unless bill is there, how to match these two entries? To ensure the matching, bank has to launch maturity bill in CBS. FCC, maturity bill means... It's a bill against advance payment. Already party has received this. So there will not be any proceeds further. In case of negotiation, purchase, discount, collection, uh, we'll get money. Negotiation from the overseas uh, bank, LC opening bank. Purchase, discount, collection, uh, we receive money from the overseas buyer or overseas importer. In case of maturity bill, uh, the funds are already with the bank only. Already exporter has received the funds. Uh, so only thing is to match, to close the issue in IDP, EDPMS package, we will launch the maturity bill and this, this entry will match in EDPMS to close that outstanding inward remittances message. This is a very important aspect because lot of entries in EDPMS are this maturity bill entries only because party has received advance payment and party has made shipment already. But uh, since no corresponding bill is there, uh, we could not close in a uh, EDPMS package. So to settle this transaction to seamlessly, we have to lodge M bill from example under maturity bill means lodging of bill. All other bills, uh, once you lodge the bill only, payment will come. 
in maturity bill already you have received the payment but just to say map it in the edpms package you are lodging maturity bill m bill it is maturity bill so one more thing friends i want to share you always pc you can't because when expo when party is having export na no, any export order so this is a very important sequence friends uh, the moment i am having export order or lc with me i have the right to avail credit with you that is called packing credit so no this is export credit proposal no one no branch is having power to reject export credit proposal without concurrence of without bringing notice of mdco very important question uh, we will not place the mdco no, but the uh, that means unless uh, because to reject export credit proposal Uh, concurrence of mdco should be there that is the importance given by uh, our government of india to export credit so what happens when i am having when i am having uh, this lc or export order with me i can go to any bank and avail pc basing on my standing it's a loan pc means packing credit where pc will go pc will is a loan account debit pc it goes to the operative account of the party casa account so when part this export then part this is called also called a pre shipment credit because this this we are giving for making the shipment happen so pre shipment credit is also it is called pack credit or pre shipment credit so once shipment is happened so what you will you will get a once shipment is happened then only party will submit bill i told you what is a bill bill is a set of bill of exchange then invoice then packing list then the certificate of origin transport documents all combinedly they will submit a bill if it is a bill under lc you will negotiate or a non lc to discount or purchase this bills purchased what you do this you will when party has submit a 1 lakh bill usd bill bills purchased at this level normally you convert into indian rupees here party will be getting it because when we at bills purchased level only normally conversion into indian rupees will happen in export transaction when you are converting into indian rupees normally in all bills na bills purchased except in c bill only when bill is matured or bill is received will convert in n p and discounting bills at the time of handling bill we convert into indian rupees so at bills purchased level we apply which rate always common question we apply bill buying rate very important because collection bills we apply tt buying remaining all rates we apply bill buying rate definite question n n p and d export bills we obtain we extend bill buying rate only we convert only collection item received payment received only c bills we will settle at tt buying rate simple question the bill buying and tt buying na definite question export bill we eb i told you ebis na export bill buying import selling export bills all n p and d bills are extended bill by bill buying rate as applicable so we'll convert the bill value into indian rupees and close it the say we should not be given to casa account you have to create the proceeds to current account, this pc account and uh, balance amount only anything go to casa very important so when you are giving loan uh, 
you are giving loan at the time before shipment that is called packing rate it goes to casa when shipment is made you are giving once again loan that is by debiting bills per it's a bill purchase bill loan bill bill discounting bill purchased this amount once again you should not give to casa very important this bills purchased amount will go to existing pc account only very very important then how bill is settled at this level only when bills purchased level only you are converting converting the foreign exchange rate into indian rupees what rate applying bill buying rate then when bill is paid i told you how the bill is paid the overseas buyer or overseas lc opening bank will issue either mt103 or mt202 if the buyer is selling the money he will they will issue mt103 if the seller if the bank is sending money out of this one i told you you get mt202 these funds will come to our ho account nostro account id mumbai na then they will issue iba to you at that rate clear so this way they by debiting ho account or iba you will be closing bills purchased this is accounting sequence of bills very very important so pc it will go to casa then bills purchased it will go to pc then how the bill is closed so by, by debiting ho account bill is closed id mumbai will issue iba so this is the accounting sequence of bills suppose on due date bill is not paid uh, within 15th day we will call it dealing of the bill that means uh, we will do the reverse that we can't cover now in next session i'll cover somebody else will cover uh, this is accounting sequence of uh, pc so very important uh, when pc is being converted into in export in import uh, at the time of settlement of bill only we are converting rupees into dollars rupees into foreign currency in imports at the time of payment of bill only we are converting indian rupees into foreign currency in exports they are, we are normally converting uh, at the time of uh, at the time of bill very important so conversion is happening uh, at this stage at bill stage conversion is happening so this is the first sequence suppose party don't because suppose uh, there is one more more also dealing with it so this is called pre shipment uh, this is called post shipment credit then this bills is called uh, because shipment already happened uh, it is called post shipment credit so when you are giving pc ecgc cover is mandatory and ecgc cover will be given there only when you are extending post shipment credit also very very important without post shipment credit uh, you can't get ecgc cover so this is a very important question uh, to avail ecgc cover export trade and corporation of india limited cover for pc is uh, extending post shipment uh, bills purchase limit also mandatory so There are two types of export credit. One is pre-shipment credit at the time of uh, called PC. One is called post-shipment credit. This is called packing credit. This is called bills purchased. So conversion when will it happen? Uh, at the time of bills purchased only, the conversion will happen from PC India foreign currency to Indian rupees. Then it will give. So one more case. If party was there, one more way of availing it. If the party is availing PCFC also, here he can convert. This is also very important aspect. Uh, export credit. There are two modes because party is getting a uh, foreign currency receipt. When he can convert, uh, there are two ways. If he is availing packing credit. Uh, he will convert into indian rupee at the time of bills purchased suppose today the market is very good he is getting good rate what he can do instead of waiting for bill all these things he can avail pcfc packing credit in foreign credit foreign currency that means suppose he is having 1 lakh usd order we are giving him 90000 dollars packing credit instead of rupees na we are giving him 90000 dollars packing pcfc what rate we will apply 
for PCFC, we will apply TD buying rate only because live funds are in export. Very, very important. Now, I will put it in simple slide. Export transactions, correct conversion will happen at two places. One is at the time of PCFC, rate is TD buying. Because party funds are ready. At the time of bill, it is called bill buying. So these two times, there are two pages where party can convert it into Indian rupees. He can avail a PCFC straight away, even before shipping meant shipment. He can straight away avail PCFC. Foreign currency, packing it in foreign currency. So immediately we get a convert in Indian rupees. At the time of bill, what we will do? We will not convert once again. Suppose he has given 90,000 PSD. We will convert, we will apply the bill amount to the PCFC and balance any margin in the only we will convert into bill buying and apply to the rate. So there are two ways. How party can avail packing credit or export credit? Export credit is of two types. One is pre-shipment, second is post-shipment. Pre-shipment is called PCFC, a PC, a PC or PCFC. If party is availing PC, PC will be in Indian rupees only, irrespective of currency. It will go to CASA account. Then when the party submits bill, at that time will convert into Indian rupees the bill amount at bill buying rate and PC will be closed. When bill is paid, IBA will be given, a bill. this bill's account is closed. If party wants to avail foreign conversion at the PC stage itself, uh, he can avail PCFC, packing it in foreign currency. So what he will do? On that day, he will convert into at what rate? TD buying rate he will convert. When uh, shipment happened, what he will do? We will open once again BRD, but here we will not convert. What we will do? We will simply uh, adjust the bill. Suppose the 1 lakh bill submitted, uh, 90,000 PCFC is there. That will adjust. Balance amount will give to EFC account or you can convert. So this is the way how we are dealing. Na? Exported accounting is very important. There are three steps. First, PC will go to CASA. Second, bills purchase will go to PC. Third, HOIBA will liquidate bills purchase. This way, transaction is paid off. So this is about PC, PCFC, sir. Uh, if time permits, uh, they give, uh, no, I will try to cover other topics next session uh, or uh, somebody else will take it. Uh. All the best, friends. Do well. Uh, one simple advice. I am telling repeatedly, no? this is not uh, any uh, uh, net or IAC will exam, all these things. Only our promotion test. Uh, the questions will be a very fundamental in nature and functional in nature only. Bank don't want us to make experts in Forex or uh, this one. They want us to make only operational expert, no? expert in operations. So all the questions will be from operations only. Try to do well. And foreign exchange questions are very simple. No? You try to understand the concepts. No? And 15 questions, easy. 15 will definitely come. No? And these 15 don't miss. Just try to, you know, we have updated logic also in our candle menu, this LDC website. No? And one more thing for your, for your benefit. No? Daily we are conducting quiz in candle. Timings yesterday, 8 to 10, we are flexible. We are trying to make it flexible. Daily, all candidates can use Candle Forum to take live quiz. We are scheduling mock test daily till 13th, up to 13th. Every day, we are scheduling mock test in Candle from CIBM. So please make best use of it. Today, some makeups are there, but tomorrow onwards, we are scheduling live quiz in Candle for all experience. No, but all aspirants are eligible for it. Uh, all promoting aspirants, uh, uh, all promoting uh, who have given willingness uh, that we, we got your staff numbers. For you, quiz is enabled daily from 8 to 10. Uh, but we want to make it flexible. Uh, you, you can log in between 6 to 11 like that we are trying to make it. Uh, so please make best use of it. Uh, around 10 to 12 mock tests will be conducting. Uh, uh, not, not 10 to 12, more than 15. Uh, so do well. All the best friends. Any doubts you can share us uh, through Candle Forum or uh, our, uh, my mail ID also, I'll be giving it to you. Any doubts, you please reach me through my mobile or mail ID. Okay. Thank you, friends. All the best. Okay.
Yes, sir. I can wind up now. Ah, sir. Okay. You are giving me one more data. I'll just uh, that's why I didn't announce anything there. We'll see later. Okay, sir. Okay. Ah, that's it. That's it. Ah, okay. Then I, I close it, sir. I can make. I can close it, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you.